Keto campers, I'm excited to be live with you today here on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. And I'm going to be doing a question and answer live stream all about keto, all about fasting, any question you have for me. And if I know the answer, I will provide the answer. And if I don't, I'll give you some resources to check out. So first of all, let me know, oops, let me know, where are you watching from today? I know some of you on Instagram already shared. I'm in beautiful Miami, Florida. Some announcements for you before I see your questions. Um, this Friday, I'll be doing a, fix this, I'll be doing a live webinar all about mastering your immune system using keto and fasting. There's some interesting studies I'm gonna share on that webinar. It's 100% free. However, there's only um, room for about 200 spots that are available. There's some people have already claimed it, it's free. And if you wanna be on this webinar and get an hour of training on the immune system, if you wanna be on this webinar and uh, understand how the immune system works and also get over $200 worth in free downloads, you can head over to benazadiwebinar.com. Benazadiwebinar.com, get signed up. It's this Friday, April 25th at 12 p.m. Eastern time. I have a question for you, and that question for you is, what are your questions for me? What are you having challenges right now? I wanted to take this time, I go live, by the way, every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, and usually, most of the time, I have, um, I'm teaching you something. I'm teaching you, uh, sharing a study with you, I'm teaching you something. Today, I decided not to do that. Today, I decided to just be here for you all during the quarantine. I, I know that many of you are having a lot of challenges right now, a lot of people are away from their routine, going to the gym, watching sports, doing things they enjoy, and a lot of people are stressing out over that. They're being, uh, they're fearful of catching a virus, they're fearful of their next paycheck, where, it's, where is it going to come from? So I'm committed to being here for you all and just supporting you any way I can. Um, so I could support you in the aspect of keto and fasting, because I do have a well, a well handle on that, a good handle on that, and if you're new to my channel, uh, my name is Ben Azadi. I am a certified functional health practitioner. I'm the best-selling author of three books. I'm a national speaker. Keto Camp is my company. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people on planet Earth. Every single day, I wake, wake up and I am inspired. I am lit up to study, to research, and to share this information with you. And I don't want you to believe every word I'm saying, but I want you to have some critical thinking to start applying it and seeing what works for you. I've seen amazing transformations when this starts. So, what are some what are your questions for me? I see uh, many of you are on here. Let me just acknowledge you. Steve's in the house, brother Steve, Amanda in the UK, Lynn, super camper, Lynn in Ireland, Kate, Natalie, Lisa is in the house, Margo, Jill, Jake, Antonio, hello everybody. So, your questions. Will the fasting trio alter my numbers? The fasting trio should improve your numbers. Um, the autophagy, excuse me, the fast tonic in the fasting trio will usually get you more ketones and less glucose, and so it gets you more autophagy. So it, should, it can in a positive way. Hello, New Mexico, Hannah, Dolly in Tennessee. Natalie, I am struggling to get back into fasting after I've been snacking too much. Any suggestions? Yes, great question, because I think a lot of people on here can relate. So if you've been struggling with fasting because you're at home and you have your pantry, you have all these things available to you, there's some things you can do. Uh, find ways to keep yourself distracted, all right? Long walks, uh, projects, get into the zone of something. You know, maybe it's a YouTube channel you wanna start. Um, but you could also do this. During your eating window, feast. Have plenty of protein during your eating window and plenty of fat. When you do that, Protein is gonna signal these satiety hormones and chemicals, cholecystokinin, uh, and many other in the body that, that tell your body, hey, you're full, stop eating. You have the hormone leptin, which is a satiety hormone, and that's also signaled when you eat these healthy fats and protein. So that's a tip for you, Natalie, and anybody else who's struggling here during the quarantine to do fasting. When you're eating, eat until full, and make sure you're eating protein and fat with each meal less of the carbohydrates, and here's a very practical way for those of you who have fallen off track with fasting or you're brand new to fasting and you wanna get started with it, here's a very practical way for you to start fasting or to get back on track. Take notes here. Fast three hours before bed. For example, if you're going to bed at 11 p.m. every single night, make sure that last bite of food is at 8 p.m. So giving yourself at least three hours fasting before you go to bed. 
you go to bed, you utilize sleep as your fasting window. So let's say you sleep until 7 a.m., right? So you're asleep from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. And then wait three hours after waking up to have your first meal. So at 10 a.m. you would break that fast, breakfast. That's what breakfast means. That would be about a 15 to 16 hour fast. You start right there. Um, if that seems too challenging for you, what you can do is this. You can just do a 12 hour fast. So you go and you make sure you're done eating. You're done eating by 8 p.m. You go to sleep and you don't eat anything the next morning until 8 a.m. That's a 12 hour fast. So you can still have breakfast, lunch and dinner, but no snacking in between and you're eating plenty of protein and fat with those meals. That is a great way to get back on track. Here's something that I teach the members of my Keto Camp Academy, which is my online program that you could join from anywhere in the world. There's a section in there called Mental Six Pack in the Academy. It's my favorite section because it's about self-development. It's about inspiration. It's about all these tools that I have helped, uh, that have mastered my results in my life. And one of the things I talk about there is getting strong, getting clear on your why. So Natalie, who asked the question, all of you on here who are asking the question, why do you want to lose the weight? Why do you want to complete? Why do you want to fast? Why do you want to get healthy? What does it mean for you? Is it because it's going to help add on 10, 20, 30 years to your life so you can grow up with your grandkids and do jumping jacks with them? What is your why? When you are clear on your why, the how becomes that much more easier. When you are fasted, and you know you're fasting because you want to get autophagy, you want to recycle damaged cells, and you have this knowledge, knowledge crushes fear and uncertainty. So keep watching these videos, keep studying fasting. The more you put it in front of you, the more you feed that beast, the more likely you are going to be uh, disciplined and you're going to stay on course. Here's a, a quote for you. It takes, well, let me, before I get to that quote, it takes 66 days to develop a new habit good or bad, 66 days on average. That's according to the University of College London. So it's gonna take some discipline and here's the deal. The chains of habits are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. So it's important to get clear on your why, have a support system. I mean, join my Keto Camp Academy. We have 260 members in there right now who are all supportive, they're amazing. I do bi-weekly coaching calls with them. Have a support system and cut people out of your life who are not supporting your healthy lifestyle. I share the story about the crabs in the bucket often. I'm gonna share it now in case you haven't heard it. Who are the crabs in your life who are not helping you fast and be healthy? It turns out you could put crabs in a bucket, 20 crabs in a bucket, leave those crabs in that bucket overnight without a lid, come back the next morning, all 20 crabs will be in that bucket. Why? Because anytime a crab tries to escape and break free, the other crabs start clawing it back down and does not let it escape. So I challenge you to challenge yourself and ask yourself, who are the crabs in your life? Who are the ones who are not letting you achieve those goals? So get clear on your why, practice that template of fasting. Here's my favorite schedule of intermittent fasting. It's an 18-6 format meaning 18 hours out of the day you're in a fasted state, and then six hours you're feasting, okay? It's, intermittent fasting is not about eating less. Intermittent fasting is about eating less often. So what that would look like on your calendar here during the quarantine and moving forward, 12 to 6 p.m., you're having your meals. 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. the next day, you're in a fasted state, you're just having some water and sea salt. I have a best-selling book all about fasting. You could buy it on Amazon or you could get it for free right now, a digital download by going to fastingcheatsheet.com. So I know it's backwards on Instagram, but it should be forward here on YouTube and uh, Facebook, fastingcheatsheet.com. Okay, what other questions do you have for me? Sharon, good to see you on here. Is fasting damaging to athletes? Uh, depends. You gotta also keep in mind that having athletic goals for performance and for fitness are not synonymous with health and longevity. So every time I study and I teach, it's with the lens of health and longevity. You can use intermittent fasting and keto flexing as a way to increase your athletic performance. You could time your carbohydrates around your workouts, around your meals, but I think it could be a powerful tool because what happens when you fast, the body raises these counter-regulatory hormones because the body thinks, oh crap, we're fasted for 16 hours, there's no food, we are in a famish, so what the body does 
it thinks that you need to go find food. It does not know or care that you could go to your phone, type in or hit the Uber Eats app, and you have a millennial knock on your door with all this food. And the body doesn't know that. We're hardwired for the old school. Out of the 70 trillion cells that we have in the body, every single one of them are hardwired for feast, famine, cycles. So when the body's in a fasted state, guess what happens? It raises these counter-regulatory hormones. What does that mean? It's literally pumping you full of energy, focus, and powering your brain because it wants to help you go find food in the wilderness, go hunt, and kill. But we are so blessed to have food readily available to us, at least most of us do, that we don't have to do that. So we use all those resources to crush a workout, to crush our day, to crush these live streams. I gotta tell you this, I am in a fasted state right now. About an hour ago, I did a 30 minute high intensity interval training workout and I'm continuing to fast because I knew that I was gonna come and do this live stream and then I have two interviews right after this, one with Benjamin Bickman, Dr. Bickman, you, hopefully you know who he is, and then another interview with Dr. Nick and Sonia Jensen and I wanna be at a peak state. So I'm fasting, I'm gonna fast for another few hours here and then I'm gonna break my fast and when I break the fast, I feast. I do not cut calories. I think focusing on calories is a huge distraction to what really matters because what really matters are the hormones and the metabolism. Anthony had a question about keto flexing. Let me get that question here. Is cyclical keto better than overall staying in ketosis long term? Great question, Anthony. So, keto flexing is a variation of cyclical keto. Most people are going to benefit from keto flexing, cyclical keto. The only time I will have somebody not do that, the only time I will have somebody stay in ketosis for a long period of time is if they have a metabolic condition going on, if they have um, type 2 diabetes, if they have uh, insulin resistance, then they should stay in ketosis longer to utilize the benefits of keeping your insulin low, to keeping your glucose low so your body could start reversing that, so your pancreas and your beta cells could wake up and do a better job, so you could reduce inflammation around your cells and in integral membrane proteins, these receptor sites, so insulin could push glucose into the cells. So, to answer your question, cyclical keto, keto flexing will benefit most people. If you are type 2 diabetic or insulin resistant, then I think it's a good idea for you to work with somebody first and foremost, but you're probably going to stay in ketosis longer and benefit from that. What other questions do you have for me? It's so awesome that there's hundreds of you here from all across the world. Hey, if you haven't hit the thumbs up button here on YouTube, please do so. It really helps this information get into some more hands. We have a super camper here, Lynn. Lynn says, Ben, I have started eating meat again. Last week, been vegetarian for years. Wow. And notice my hunger has increased substantially. Really battling to fast uh, lately. Normally do OMAD. Could this just be adaptation? Interesting, Lynn. So what protein sources are you having? What, what animal pro protein sources are you having? Are you eating red meat? Uh, I've noticed red meat like grass-fed beef and steak can be very filling and, and satiating. Um, I would also include more fat with those animal protein that you're eating. So for, for example, if you're, if you're eating chicken breast, eat the chicken breast with the chicken skin. Um, eat more steak, eat more or have more um, things like bone broth. Uh, so it can be your body adapting to it, but also it could be your body telling you you need more calories, you need more food, you need more nutrition. Something else, by the way, could be your, di your assimilation of the nutrients because when somebody has leaky gut or they're not digesting food optimally, then you could feel hungry, you could feel malnourished. Um, Even though you're eating a whole bunch of calories, your body's not able to assimilate that. So there's a great um, thing you can do. There's a great product called Ion, Ion, I-O-N. I just interviewed Dr. Zach Bush on Monday. Uh, his interviews on this YouTube channel, we talked about this product, Ion. It helps close the tight junctions and helps with leaky gut so you could actually assimilate food. There's a coupon code in the notes of that video. So Dr. Zach Bush, brilliant man. He's a triple board medical doctor, a colleague of mine, and he shared about that. He designed that product. So maybe you could throw that into the mix, have more fats with your meals and see how that goes. Zippor says, in Keto Camp Academy, Ben is teaching the best way for fasting. I'm feeling so good in my new lifestyle. Thank you so much, Ben. I'm so proud of you, Zippor. I love having you in the academy. I'm blessed to coach you. You're welcome, Lynn. Let me know how it goes. If you still need some coaching on my next live stream, let me know. Jill, hey, I am planning on doing vegan keto after breaking my fast. Any ideas on how to do it correctly? 
Yeah, so Jill, you have the template on how to break that fast. So just whatever foods are on there that are vegan friendly, do it. I like going into the vegan diet for periods of time. Uh, I haven't done it this year, but last year I did 30 days of 100% vegan with my girlfriend Natasia as a way to create adaptation. So I'm all for it, short term. I don't think it's healthy long term, but if you wanna do 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days, I'm all for that. Same thing goes for carnivore. Ray Garcia, taking meds and supplements while fasted that say take with food. Well, when it comes to medication, you gotta always take it, whatever your doctor suggested, listen to your doctor. Supplements, a good rule of thumb is to take your supplements away from um, a fast and have it during your eating window and with the exception of like um, electrolytes and potassium and magnesium. Good day, brother. Keep up the great work. I fully support the work you're doing in New Jersey. Thank you, Village Ram. I appreciate that. Steph Klank, uh, Klink, what healthy carbs do you recommend when you need to break ketosis and how often do you do that? Yes, Steph. So in my academy, I have four variations on how to do it. It depends on where you are with your goals. Um, I'll give you one of my favorite variations to do it. It's the 5-1-1 rule. So I hope you're taking notes here. Write this down, 5-1-1 rule. This is a great way to practice keto flexing. And I'm gonna answer your question on which carbs to have. So the 5-1-1 rule goes as follow. I got this from my mentor and coach, Dr. Pampa. Five days out of the week, you're doing keto. You're eating less than 50 grams of carbs for the day. And you're doing whatever your favorite intermittent fasting schedule is for five days. One day out of the week, you're doing a 24-hour water fast, going dinner to dinner, lunch to lunch, you're getting more of that autophagy for one day out of the week. That final day is your keto flex day, your feast day. You're gonna have about 100 to 200 grams of high healthy carbs, no fasting, as a way to change things up, to remind the body that it's not starving, to get more of this mTOR and less of the autophagy because you want a, a, a healthy balance there. And you're gonna have these healthy approved carbs. I have a list in my Keto Camp Academy, but I'll just shoot some off the top of my head here. Yams, yuca, fruit, uh, ancient grains, if you're able to digest that, um, sweet potatoes, citrus fruits are fantastic. Those are the bulk of what you wanna have on that day. Some dark chocolate, some cranberries, all the berries are great on that day. Hey, let me know where you're watching from if you haven't done so already. I see there's several of you, uh, hundreds, uh, almost 100 of you here on YouTube, several of you on Facebook. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. Dolly says, I fast and end ketosis, but do not lose weight. Why? When it comes to weight loss, it's about bringing down uh, cellular inflammation, Dolly. So some people are losing weight, but they're losing weight around their organs. They're losing some of that white fat here, um, inside fat, and it's not showing on the outside. But I would do this, Dolly. I would not weigh yourself for seven weeks at a time. Follow that structure, because I know you're, you're in the academy. Follow that structure for seven weeks and work on tools that you learn in there to reduce inflammation in the body. Pay attention to non-scale victories. Non-scale victories are so important, right? So we have how your clothes fit. How, are you having more confidence? What about the inches, your body fat percentage? Pay attention to those. And the number on the scale should not determine whether or not something is working. That should be a seven week at a time. I know it's hard to do that, to ditch the scale for seven weeks at a time, but it'll drive you nuts. So if you wanna lose weight, stop focusing on losing weight, start focusing on health. Like Dr. Eric Berg says, we don't lose weight to get healthy, we get healthy to lose weight. What does that mean, get healthy? Well, we reduce inflammation in the body. We practice healthy keto, healthy fasting. We focus on the fundamentals, sleep, hydration, Movement, mindset, I can't tell you, it, it, it's crazy. And I know my, my friend Thomas DeLauer posted about this recently. Now more than ever, there's so many people who are commenting with hateful comments on my post. I've, I've never seen it more than ever. And I send every single one of them love. But when you, are, when you have negative thoughts, when you're expressing negative thoughts, when you're typing it, you cannot heal a body that has hate. You are gonna create inflammation around your cells when you have negative thoughts and you don't even have to express it you just have to think it and it it's it's a shame um and let's pray for them and send them love but those are the fundamentals right now right there sleep um uh, movement hydration healthy thoughts out of the sixty thousand thoughts that we think every single day 90 percent of them are the same thoughts from yesterday and they're usually negative thoughts so let's be diligent and do critical thinking here 
and your body will heal. That's a form of reducing inflammation. Jackie, good to see you on here. Hi, Ben, do I need a cycle keto? For instance, should I do three months on and then come off? Or should I continue without any breaks? So in my academy, I teach getting keto adapted uh, within 28 days. I have a keto jumpstart in there. And then we move into some different pillars, but you're in ketosis for about three months, like you said, and then we start flexing. So it depends if you have insulin resistance or you're type two diabetic at that point, you might wanna stay a little bit longer. If you don't, then yeah, it'll be wise to start flexing. Andrea the Connector, good to see you. Amazing, Andrea. And uh, hello, Tiago, Anna, good to see everybody on here. Shane, amazing, amazing, amazing. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Keto flexing for women, yeah, especially if you have a thyroid, uh, uh, underactive thyroid. So the last one day water fast is in the middle of the week. It's Steph, however you wanna do it, depending on that your schedule, but it could be whenever you want. Getting rid of meds more than weight. That's right, Shannon is amazing. Shannon's in the Keto Camp Academy. She was two, type two diabetic using insulin, and she posted a couple months ago, she no longer has to use her insulin. These are the types of transformations that we see in the Keto Camp Academy. It's just an amazing program. We also do weekly online workouts so you can keep your fitness going. Uh, there's two coaching calls per month with me. We do live trainings with amazing guests and I live stream all of my podcast interviews in the Facebook group before they're released to the public. If you wanna join the Academy, there's a free seven day trial for you over at ketocampacademy.com. KetoCampAcademy.com is where you can uh, get signed up. Our next coaching call is actually this Saturday. And if you missed it, I'm, giving, I'm doing a free webinar about mastering the immune system this Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. That's April 25th. Head over to BenAzadiWebinar.com. Anna, I am grateful you appreciate the information. I got love for you. So much love for you. Do you have Bulletproof Coffee during the water fast? Ideally, you wanna just have water to get the most benefits, but if the Bulletproof Coffee will help you get through it, by all means, go for it. I tell myself and kids every day, faith over fear. Thank you, Ben, from Colorado Springs. And that's amazing, I love that. What are good numbers of ketosis? Great question. So, how many of you test with like a Keto Mojo? Just type in, um, if you test your blood ketones, just type in keto. I'm just curious, how many of you test your ketones? Type in keto if you test your ketones. What are the best ranges to be in? I'm gonna share that right now. Let me just get a sip of this water. I also wanna express my gratitude for all of you who have joined me right now during the live stream and those who are watching the replay. Thank you, thank you for investing part of your day with me. Do not take it lightly. I'm so grateful for you all. Okay, so many of you, Lucas, Heidi, Eric, Amanda, Laura, hey Laura, good to see you, Kita, uh, Lynn, Dolly, Rachel, Serena, Midori, Kaboob, um, Tara, of course, good to see you, Tara, Jill, awesome. So what are the optimal numbers? Here is an important line for you to write down, jot this down, okay? We do not chase ketones at Keto Camp, we chase results. Having high amounts of ketones are not necessarily a good thing unless you're doing like a block fast. If you're doing an intermittent fast and you have high ketones over three, four, that could mean your body and your brain is actually not utilizing those ketones. So what is an optimal range to be in? The optimal range to be in is going to be, what I've seen in general, somewhere between 0 0.8 blood ketones, 0 0.8 and 2.8, somewhere between there. Now, you also wanna test your glucose because if your glucose is too high, your body will utilize the glucose first because it wants to get rid of that because glucose is a toxin to the body or high glucose, I should say. Um, so glucose in a fasted state, the optimal range is between 70 and 90, 92. Some advanced testing for you is after an hour or two after eating a meal, you want your glucose to be below 120. These are US measurements, below 120. Two hours after eating a meal, you want your glucose to be below 100. Those are great signs that your insulin, your pancreas, and your body is doing well with that meal that you had. Sharon, I am grateful for you as well, and all of you as well. Um, love and gratitude to you, Ben. Thank you for the useful information. Samuel, thank you for being super camper here on YouTube. Uh, Alan, test keto, awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, there's more questions here. Hey, before I get to these questions, what time is it? What time is it? 
Okay, I gotta hop off in about five minutes to get ready for my interview with Dr. Ben Bickman, but I wanna, I'm gonna get some more questions here. But before I do, YouTube and Facebook, please hit the thumbs up button on this video, YouTube. It really does help. <laughs> and if you have not left my podcast, the Keto Camp Podcast, a review on Apple Podcasts or for, on Stitcher, please do so today. Uh, just take 30 seconds out of your day and leave the podcast, the Keto Camp Podcast, a rating and review on Apple iTunes. It really helps the show grow. And I put a lot of energy and effort into that show. A lot of money goes into getting that show out to you. Three episodes a week for the last almost year we've been doing that. 134 episodes in and just by you leaving the show rating and review could help that information get to more people and change more lives so i encourage you to leave the keto camp podcast go to apple podcast today and please 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 leave a rating and review you never know i might read your review on one of my podcast episodes my wife is hey eric my wife is consistently at 110 glucose and 0.2 first thing in the morning and her weight loss has stalled any suggestions Yes, so morning measurements, when I see that, could be a, a couple things. It could be something called the dawn effect. In the morning, when the sun rises, the body will, the, the hormones, our hormones are in sync with mother nature. So as the sun rises, cortisol is activated to get the body ready for the day. So what happens is, when cortisol gets activated, glucose follows, and then in, um, ketones drop. So that could be something that's going on there. It could be poor sleep as well, and it could be a toxicity issue. So I would focus on getting quality sleep, track your sleep if you're not to see if you're getting good sleep. You might be asleep for eight hours, but was it good sleep? You could use something like the Aura Ring. So I would start with sleep, and then I would, um, you could have some, uh, here's something else you can do. I've noticed that those who eat too close to bed have higher glucose levels in the morning and lower ketones. So give yourself at least three hours, or your wife, at least three hours of fasting right before bed. And that could help with your morning glucose. I would try that out. I also have some troubleshooting stuff in my um, Keto Camp Academy. Yeah, Dr. Bickman's amazing. I already interviewed him. He's on this channel. This is round two with him to talk about his um, upcoming book called Why We Get Sick. So what other questions? What type of magnesium is most absorbent? I like magnesium malate crystal and I like my magnesium three and eight. So if you go to ketocampsupplements.com, that's with an S, ketocampsupplements.com, that website is where myself, Dr. Pompa, and all the doctors I work with and health practitioners I work with have curated these supplements. So you can search and you can trust that every product on there lives up to our high standards, ketocampsupplements.com. Does grass-fed collagen break a fast. Yes, it does because collagen has protein and protein will initiate a glucose response and that will break the autophagy and your fast. It will. Okay. What did you say, Steve? Do you want, do you want me to show my six, the six year old six pack? <laughs> I do. Post it in the group, man. You got it, Janae. I'm, a pre I, I'm grateful you enjoyed this information. Natural sleep aids, yes. So some natural sleep aids, banana tea. How many of you have heard me talk about banana tea? Or if you've heard me talk about banana tea, type in banana tea, I'm curious. I'm gonna share what that means right now. Banana tea, I see Hannah and Steph and Serena know all about that. Lynn knows all about that. Try it tonight. I call it nature's NyQuil. I wrote about it in my book, The Power of Sleep, which you could get on Amazon. Um, a lot of you have heard of it, cool. So what you wanna do is banana tea. You wanna grab a whole banana. Hopefully you have it at home. Um, maybe not because of what's going on with the quarantine, but you grab a whole banana. You leave the peel on, leave the peel on, but cut off the ends of that banana. Wash it, make sure it's organic, that's important. And then you wanna put that banana with the peel on, cut it in half, Put it into a pot of water, let it boil for about five minutes or so, or unless until the peel starts to brown. Pour that water into a cup, and what happens is the peel has more magnesium, more potassium, more of these micronutrients than the actual banana itself, and that's going to actually seep into the water. You drink that, discard the banana, or put it into the freezer, and that is a great natural sleep aid. Something else you could do is mouth tape before bed. It forces nasal breathing, 
So there's a company called Somnifix. If you go to ketocampkit.com, I have a kit for natural sleep aids, ketocampkit.com. So those are a couple things you can do. All right, there's a lot of questions here. Kim says, go back up to my question, please. Can you repost it? It's hard, it's a challenge for me to see all the questions here on my phone because a lot of them have, oh, I see it here. How do I get all the macros while eating in a six hour intermittent fasting window? It's too much food. Yeah, great question. Here's the thing when it comes to fasting. You can get your macros, your calories from the plate of food in front of you, or you can get your calories and your macro from your butt, hips, and thighs. It's your choice. So my point is this, if you have extra weight to lose that you wanna lose, then let your body use that for energy. Now, if you're already at your goal weight, how do you get in enough macros? Well, you gotta just make sure you're eating one meal until full. You are feasting at least one meal until full. And then you have one day per week where you do not fast. You have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, a feast day. I talk about this in my academy. So it's kind of like that 5-1-1 rule that I talked about earlier. That's how you ensure, because I don't focus on macros. The only one I do focus on the first 28 days in my academy is carbohydrates, but fat and protein, we do not track. Calories and tracking calories is a huge distraction. Calories matter, yes, but they're not important. The body, the human body is not a calculator. The human body is not a bank account. The human body is a complex chemistry lab. Let's start treating the body as such. So when we could focus on health, inflammation, the fundamentals, we don't have to focus on calories. So that's a good rule of thumb. I'm glad that that was helpful, Kim. I'm gonna answer a couple more, then I'm gonna sign up to get ready for my interview with Dr. Ben Bickman. I see a lot of you do drink the banana tea, cool. I got that tip, by the way, I gotta give credit where credit is due, from my colleague, uh, Dr. Michael Bruce. He's the one who introduced me to banana tea. Lisa says, will cortisol still come up in the morning if glucose is low and ketones are high when fasting? It can for some people. Yeah, it can. You know, there's, when it comes to looking at your numbers, it's good to get a three day averages because one day could be an anomaly. And don't get fixated on the numbers so much. I know it's cool to have that data, but um, just stick and stay. Sometimes you gotta make a shift here and there. It's a good idea to track your sleep to see what sleep is doing to your numbers. And I know you know that because you're kicking butt, Lisa. Anna says, about to go OMAD. If you don't know what OMAD is, OMAD stands for one meal a day. So like a dinner to dinner type of thing. So Anna says, wet fast, not dry fast. Any tips for hydration? Not breaking the fast, but getting electrolytes. Yes, I have um, sir, a, a few tips for you. I'm just looking down here. to find. I have this little salt shaker that I take with me. So you would have water and sea salt throughout your fast. You could also use a great product called 40,000 volts. What's up, Ken Berry? Good to see you, brother. Um, you could drink this product called 40,000 volts. There's also a product called, I think it's called Keto Chow that gives you some electrolytes, but I personally have some Redmond's Real Salt with water throughout the day. Here's another tip for you. We need glucose, or glucose will help bring in sodium into your cells, but when you're fasted, you're not really raising glucose. So how do you do that? Well, you can have your sea salt right before a workout, during a workout in the fasted state to help get the, um, the sodium into the cells. That's an option for you, but here's a rule of thumb. Just have that water and sea salt throughout the day. If you drink coffee, coffee is a diuretic, so make sure you throw in some sea salt with your coffee because you're gonna lose some electrolytes with the coffee, get it right back. So I have myself, like Dr. Ken Berry, I know he does the same thing. We have ourselves a fatty cup of keto co coffee every single day. I'm gonna answer one more question, then I gotta get off here. I'm gonna interview Dr. Ben Bickman in about 25 minutes, and I wanna get prepared for him. Uh, what is the final question that I will answer here? Okay, Crystal, I will answer your question. And those of you that I missed your question, I apologize. And I will get it on the next one. I'll, I will try my best to get on the next one. So Crystal says, olive oil, what kind is best? Refined, unrefined, organic? Yeah, so when it comes to olive oil, I'm an olive oil snob myself. And uh, here's how you know if your olive oil is a good one or not. You take a shot of it. And guess what happens? Take a shot of that olive oil. If it burns your throat, makes your tongue fuzzy, two thumbs up. That means it is loaded in antioxidants, polyphenols, and it's one of the good ones. What we wanna look for when it comes to olive oil is first harvest, cold pressed organic. 
It's very hard to find that, even in the supermarket. So I get my, I'm part of this olive oil club, and they, the best olive oil I've ever tried. It is first harvest, cold pressed organic, and they deliver it to my door every quarter. I get three bottles. So I have a deal with them for Keto Campers to get a $39 bottle. If you want to try them out for a buck, head to Keto Camp. Remember, it's camp with a K, ketocampoliveoil.com to get a $39 bottle for a buck. I am going to run. I got to go. I got to get set up for my podcast. Thank you so much, everybody who joined me today. If you're watching a replay, thank you so much. I want to know, after I sign off here, put down below, what was your favorite takeaway from today? What was the biggest takeaway from today? If you want me to answer your questions, get into my academy. I make sure I answer all questions in there. Go to ketocampacademy.com. And then finally, my webinar on the immune system is taking place this Friday. Go to benazadiwebinar.com. Super grateful for every single one of you. Sending you love, sending you light. Keep faith over fear, and I'll see you all soon.